But some people look at a body of water and they see beauty. Others may look at a body of water and see majesty. Bob looks at a body of water and sees swims. <laughs> and all that was needed for him was a little planning, a little training, and a spirit of adventure. And Bob would devote himself relentlessly to the pursuit of new and in the minds of many insane swims because, as he would say, it had to be done. Bob's creativity and energy inspired and catalyzed the South End's world-class open water swim program that exists today. But his most profound impact may have been on the individual swimmers, as our next speaker, Lisa Sereben, will make clear. today to share some of my stories and memories of Bob because I, I, we all have so many stories to tell here and he touched everybody's life in so many ways but what I remember most about Bob and what I want to talk about a little bit today was his spirit of adventure because I was so lucky to have been included in so many of his adventures and misadventures <coughs> in the bay <laughs> He planned so many swims for me, and it was that spirit of adventure. My phone would ring, and it would be Bob, and he'd be, least baby, least baby, least baby. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you sitting down? Are you sitting down? You better be sitting down, because I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. And then he would lay out whatever his plan was. He'd say, let's swim from Point Bonita to Candlestick Park. Or he'd say, let's swim from Alcatraz to San Quentin. Or... Let's do a reverse beta breakers. And he would put the plan together. He'd talk one of his friends with a boat into getting the boat ready. He'd talk somebody else into kayaking. And then he'd just tell me where and when to show up, exactly what kind of sandwiches and snacks to bring, and we'd be off. And we'd do it. And he just loved the adventure. He loved being at the helm of the boat. He loved leading the charge, shouting the directions, part cheerleader, part mentor, part coach. Yeah, baby, yeah, baby, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd be pointing and telling you where to go. No matter how long the swim took, because we all know that his ability to call the tides was not exactly spot on. But no matter how long it took, we'd always finish the swim because I knew that with Bob, getting back on the boat was never an option. <laughs> so there were a number of these adventures and misadventures, but there's one I remember uh, specifically where his ability to call the tides was exactly spot on, or maybe he was really lucky that day, I don't know. But we were gonna do a test swim for the Golden Gate Bridge swim, and he, Bob wanted to test the tides, so he took me out, and I was the only swimmer that day. And it was a beautiful day with bright blue sky, and I jumped in at Four Point, and there was a little bit of texture in the water, and the pelicans were flying, and I kept stopping and looking around, and I looked under the bridge, and everybody does that mid-span, and it was gorgeous. And when I touched the lime rock at the end, he goes, you're never going to believe it, Lisa, you're never going to believe it. I said, what are, you, what are you talking about? He said, 19 minutes and 56 seconds. Whoa. I was like... It had nothing to do with swimming prowess on my part, I want to say. He picked the tide, and it just whooshed me from one end of the bridge to the other. But I said, Bob, if I had been that close to your record, why didn't you tell me? I would have swam faster. 